Hi El Paso, this is Irina Armendariz Jackson and I am here with Dolores Chacon who has very graciously invited us to visit her at her home. And this is a treat for me because you cannot get closer to the fence as you are getting here in, the ba in her backyard. So this is Dolores Chacon. Thank you so much, Dolores, for allowing us to come into your home, into your beautiful backyard. And it is gorgeous. We'll give you a little tour in a little bit. And uh, and, and look us up because eventually we're gonna have an event back here, right? Absolutely, Dolores? absolutely. Yes. yes. So Dolores is also like myself, a native of El Paso, and she's also very burdened by what is happening and the media, the message that the media is portraying, where they're portraying El Paso people to, that, that we all are for illegal immigration. And we are not, but you can't get any closer to the border than right here where we're standing. You can see behind me is the fence. What do you call this fence? I personally, for myself, I call it my freedom fence. Uh, freedom because when this fence went up, I was able to enjoy the freedoms of my own home, my own property. I, I could hold events, family gatherings, and just a, it was just a, a, a private area for me and my family, my mother, my daughter, and then eventually my granddaughter, to come and enjoy our property, our backyard, where we could have a barbecue or just sit in our backyard and enjoy our home. But why couldn't you do it before the fence went up? Because we had a high degree of traffic, illegal traffic. Uh, illegals that perfect strangers, men, 15 to 20 men, just crawling over, or uh, not, not over, but under the fence that we had here that the international boundary had for us. And it was sheer chaos. Chaos uh, uh, combined with fear because we really didn't know who they were. Not only men, we had teenagers, uh, unaccompanied uh, children. Uh, uh, while we had women with their babies, uh, they would sit back here, uh, literally litter our backyard. Uh, it was my responsibility to come back and clean whenever I could. When I saw perfect strangers coming in, I had to run inside my house. I was deprived of my freedoms because illegals were taking away my freedom of enjoying my home, enjoying my backyard. Uh, so when this fence went up, not the first one, but the second one, the, uh, which is the taller which one? Is the, the taller, taller one, one, the back one back? that uh, it was uh, set up by, voted by Beto, it was voted by Biden, Obama, and Hillary. So, but, but now so, it's not a good idea. But now it's not a good idea, which I think it's just hypocrisy. Yes. Hypocrisy because they are feeding people the wrong message, and I think it's wrong. I think it's dangerous. I think they need to step up and protect our the citizens, the citizens yes. of this country, of this neighborhood. Okay, so I'm looking at you, Dolores, and you're very light skinned. We're gonna talk about that because you're I'm very morena. So no everybody expects me to speak Spanish. Do you do it out of racist feelings against Latinos, especially Mexicans, because we're right here. What is it, where were you born? I'm Native American. I have my lineage, 35%. You are Native American? Yes, I'm, I'm, I am, you can tell. You, you might not see, you know, you might understand. But I am. Uh, my family came to this country for, that, for the American dream. Mm -hmm. And they did it through hard work. You were sharing. You were sharing with us when we got here that your grandmother, were they the the great grandmother, and they had they were the original owners of this property, and how it was a small place, yes. and then they would work and save, exactly. and then build, exactly. and then they would work and exactly. save and build again, 
And so that is part of the American dream, exactly. where if you work hard, you're able to acquire what you want to acquire. We have a government right now that not only at the local level, but the national level, where it's telling us that they know exactly what to do with your hard earned money. And that's not part of the way that our country was established. Now, going back to the fence, you pointed out to us, and I hope that you can watch, you can see where if there is an actual overlay. Let me let me come across real quick and kind of show. I'm gonna kind of skip up here, and it's it's right here. You can see fence over fence. Um, can you? I hope everybody can see that. There's fence over fence. It almost looks like a mismatch because there's a fence behind it and there's a fence in front of it. So why why do you they have that, Dolores? Why why do we have that overlay? Well, uh, when uh, when they were noticing that the, the National Guard at that time was uh, working hand in hand with Border Patrol, mm -hmm. and they would come alongside the fence, and when they would see gaps, they would sew them in and mash them in. But yet, uh, it wouldn't stop them. It wouldn't stop them until uh, I have several. Let's okay. take a time out. The screen isn't. It's not making you guys small again. It's like right on your shirt. Oh, okay. Hold on. Time out. We're trying to figure this out. Remember, we're amateurs. Truth, yes. oh, because we know that the media is not gonna is not gonna talk about the truth. No. So we're just trying to bring you the truth. So just bear with us. Can you do it? Okay. Is it done? We're very amateur. Nobody <laughs> has ever said that we're professionals, right? No. We're way. just citizens that are tired of the narrative that the media has talked about, that Beto and Escobar put out, the what El Paso ones are, which is a complete lie. You know, they're 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 like the the waves. They move this way when they want votes that way, they move that way. Uh, the other way when they want votes the other way. And so you called this the Obama. You called it your freedom fence, but you also called it your Beto fence. I call it Beto, Biden, Obama, and Hillary. <laughs> hey, you know, they voted for it. It served a purpose. Sadly, now they're against it. I think that's hypocrisy. Yes. I think it's a false narrative. Yes. Uh, and they're not being truthful to the people. Okay, so let's go back and explain a little bit. You said that the illegals were actually cutting that fence to go through it. Uh, three o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, we would see them. They would cut. Uh, we had a we we have an extensive uh, <laughs> uh, uh, amount of uh, pliers because they would leave them, and then we I, you know, <laughs> I have my own hardware. But uh, they would cut, and they would they would just slit. Uh, I don't want to, the word is slither because it would just squeeze in there and at two or three o'clock in the morning, it was very disruptive. They, they on your private, on pro private property. property. Yes. Okay. So what is key about just during the night, it, they did it during the day. I mean, it, was, it was just. What is key of the location that we are at, we are less than a mile away from one of our international bridges and where we as Americans we have front doors to our nation. And the bridges, the international bridges, are our front door. Now, we're also going to address the issue of the fact that Escobar has just been um, telling the OFO office to not work with the Border Patrol and the Border Patrol not to work with the OFO and to not use their um, weapons that they have it, because we're going to make immigrants afraid. So I'm here also as a Border Patrol wife. I take a big issue on that because it puts my husband's life in mm -hmm. jeopardy. And the oath that these officers have taken is to protect our nation from um, from enemies, foreign and domestic. And I consider anyone Anyone that speaks against the protection of our own country, even if you're an elected official, a domestic um, threat. And I do believe that Veronica Escobar and all the left is a domestic threat that are going behind and, and slapping uh, the, the oath that they took. Mm 
Mm-hmm. So I love the fact that you have invited us to be in your backyard and we're, we are going to have an event back there and Absolutely. we're going to, I'm pretty sure your neighbors mostly feel like you now that they, there's a fence, it, they're protected. I remember, um, right before the election, I came by the apartments, those red apartments that mm-hmm. are real ne- really close, That's right next was. door. Uh-huh. They're, they're right next door to the, to the bridge. And I saw a lot of American flags on those. Yes. on those apartments. Yes. And for the left to say that Hispanics in El Paso and in border cities want illegal immigration is a flat out lie. So going back to the message that Veronica Escobar is giving Border Patrol and OFO is downright dangerous yes. for uh, the citizens of the of, of the United States, primarily those that live in the on the border. I mean, and you, there's no more closer to the border than you. But also, but also, we want to make sure that you see the human face of Border Patrol agents, of ICE agents, OFO agents. They are our neighbors. One of them is my husband. I have spouses. We just had a big event on Saturday night where we were invited to the home of one of the ICE agents' wives, invited us, put together. There was brand new people that are sick and tired of the fact that they are putting out this message, especially Beto and Veronica. Now, you know, we hear also the fact that Beto is thinking about running. And to Texas, I say, what has he done for El Paso where he began his career? He has flip-flopped and not cared for the sake of a dollar in his pocket. And the same for Veronica Escobar. Not too long ago, we did a live right by her house, which Facebook actually took down because as we were filming, there was three illegals dropped off behind us. And when I was, I I mean, it was like we planned it, but we (laughs) didn't plan it. And we were like, are you kidding me? Are you catching this? And we tried to get have a conversation with them. And this is being done. They used to do it at night. Now they do it in the day. Why? Because they feel empowered by people like Veronica Escobar and Beto who have victimized them. What about the people like Dolores? What about the people like my husband who is a border patrol agent who has taken an oath to defend um, the United States citizens through the Constitution? Next time I'm in Washington, D.C., or maybe I'll do it here. Maybe we should give Veronica Escobar a copy of the Constitution. Absolutely. Because she needs to understand that she is going against everything that the Constitution stands for and the oath. Yes, ma'am. And so I want to take this opportunity to call on every Border Patrol spouse, ICE spouses, OFOs and every law enforcement agency that feels that we do not have a voice, please message me. It's important that everybody in the nation understands that we are not for illegal immigration. Why, you know, there's there's so many facets, there's so many faces about illegal immigration that we don't talk about. We don't talk about the fact that when you come in here illegally, It is so much easier for you to be victimized Mm -hmm. by people that will take advantage of your Mm -hmm. uh, legal status. Mm -hmm. And I see it all the time. And I've shared some of it with with people. We Veronica Escobar is a modern day slave trader because opening the borders for illegal immigrants Mm -hmm. without being able to work when they get hungry. What are they going to do, Dolores? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What are they? We are. Hardship. We're going to corner them it's into criminal activity. And who will be the victims? The ones that she swore to protect. It is so ironic. So what if you had a message to that you were able to speak to Biden, the Biden administration directly? What would you want? What is the truth of an El Paso? I mean, right next to the border citizen. What is what is your message directly to them and to Veronica Escobar? Well, we don't we didn't have the freedoms. And it's all about the freedoms to be able to to enjoy the freedoms that God has inalienable in, rights. In, yes. Exactly. And you know, it's 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 uh, it's sad and it's tragic that um, they they haven't lived what we have lived down here. And even if they have lived, they turn a blind eye to it. 
Well, exactly, because it's an it's a, it's it's an injustice that they do for others. Exactly. You know, it's not it's not. Yes. If we're so concerned with human rights and children's rights, the 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 crying and wailing and crying of children mm. in the winters mm. when they want to cross over and the hostility and meanness and aggression that those who are at literally stealing their money mm -hmm. not taking an account of their of the wealth welfare of them major the human way, right violation exactly exactly the coyotes disrespect the women. They scream at them. They you've heard they it all. Them. You've heard it, it all. It, it, exactly. Yes, I have, and it's tragic. It's tragic to see and hear these children crying mm. in the cold in the winters, mm -hmm. and not just that, but when the first wave came in. Mm -hmm. The illegals would hit the fence and say, let me in, let me in, let me in. Yeah, it's an abuse either way. It's an abuse either way. We've empowered it's those that have completely stepped over our justice system. Mm -hmm. uh, we did see a little bit of a relief during the Trump administration. Yes. Yes, and now, happens. very quickly, he's been in office, what, 40-some years? I mean, 40-some days? And uh, tragically, he has rolled back every protection that United States citizens and illegal immigrants also had. You know, when you when you pro uh, provide an opportunity for that 10 year old to be sent by their parents and they scrape and they borrow and maybe even steal to send their 10 year old little girl to the United States because of the opportunity that the Biden administration and that Escobar and Beto have opened for them. Um, and, and, you know, if this little girl is already in puberty, the, her parents will give her the pill, not for if she is raped, but for when she is raped. Because as you were talking about it, Dolores, these coyotes, are ruthless. They don't care about human rights. You stand and grandstand on a human rights violations. What about the opportunities that you are creating by these atrocious um, trampling? are 13 year olds, they're teenagers. Not only that, mm -hmm. I've seen the ones that the children mm -hmm. and yes, the children that they supposedly have, the unaccompanied minors mm -hmm. and they're 12 to 17 year old young men, mm -hmm. more young because men. They can't get prosecuted. And not only that, how much do they make mm -hmm. crossing over? Now, Mexico is still very close. When you create a vortex where there is hunger in, a, in, in, in any land, people will turn to criminal activity mm -hmm. because they want to feed their children and they want to feed their families. And so that's what we're creating by this. Mm -hmm. We are creating an opportunity for all these coyotes to to charge these people money they don't have. Exactly. They it's a they do they do uh, lose a lot of money, uh, like you said uh, back at, back at, in in their home. They uh, uh, literally sell their own properties mm -hmm. and come here without any money, and they they get caught. So they really lose everything. They lose. Uh, it's a big hardship. It really is. And it's not. It's not. I'm concerned for the safety and security of everybody. Exactly. Of everybody. Exactly. Not just the United, the citizens of the of this wonderful, fabulous country, but also the welfare of those who are making this this journey. Uh, they put themselves in danger. The women and children. I'm very concerned about. The women and children. Correct. Uh, the children, because it's no fault of their own. Mm -hmm. You know, the mothers, uh, parents are, they're, they're told that, you know, you're going to do this and you're going to get this and free and all this stuff. But in the meantime, the hardships. And so in my case, it needs to be a win-win situation. Win-win mm -hmm. situation for the safety and security. Of everybody. Of everybody. When you dehumanize any any demographic, whether it's the 
people that are coming in here illegal, but also when you dehumanize our law enforcement agents, it actually sets the ground for a very dangerous situation because that's exactly what the Nazis did. And that's exactly what the left is doing. They dehumanized the gypsies. They dehumanized homosexuals. They dehumanized Jews. We hear a lot about dehumanization of Jews, but there were so there was 12 million people actually murdered by Adolf Hitler. Six million of them were Jews, but there was the, the cripple the and the like I said, the cripple, the gypsies, the homosexuals, they were dehumanized. And that's what we're doing with our law enforcement agents. You know, June of uh, 2019 is when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Castro, and uh, Veronica Escobar went over and did their little musical theater over there in Clint Station. Well, I take a big um, I'm, I'm against that completely and offense to it because that's a station my husband is in. So dehumanizing a father, a godly man who works very hard to provide for his family. And just like him, there's so many others. And I want to say that most of these agents, because of where we live, they're Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Yet they want mm -hmm. the left, including Veronica mm -hmm. Escobar and Beto and Biden and all of that, they want to. Uh, portray them as being racist uh -uh. and they're far from racist no. these are these are people who out of their own money gather whatever is needed in order to provide when they catch these illegals i've been to the stations i see the diapers the formula the food mm -hmm. my husband was actually in clint station yes. and i saw the numbers rise from 70 some to 125 to 200 to 250 these are just the minors. And my husband would literally be the one that would help them um, clean up everything that they needed, that where they were at, uh, feed them breakfast and feed them lunch. And a lot of it was very heartbreaking for them because there was one-year-old that were there all the way to 17-year-old. Now, at that time, CBP asked for funds. And people like Veronica Escobar voted against uh -huh. giving CBP the funds necessary in order to alleviate the hardship that they created at the border. So like you're saying, you're concerned for the welfare of everybody. Most U.S. citizens are as well. Yes. And citizens in El Paso cannot um, be further than the truth than what people like Veronica Escobar, Biden, and Beto actually talk about. We have legis we, we have um, a, a political people, not only here in El Paso, but within Texas that uh, claim to be experts on border security. And, you know, I want to take this time to call them out on both sides, on both sides. Have they come and visit it with you? Have they come and knocked on your door and say, Dolores, is the wall really working? And give us your story. And when you ignore the people that are at the front lines, and that's what you are, Dolores, you alongside with all our border patrol and our law enforcement, you guys are at the front line. Yes. And to not hear the truth actually allows us, like this pressure cooker, it's going to blow up. People in the United States are going to get sick and tired of their tr of the truth of their side not being told especially and that's why we're here time, especially during this time because as it is the centers are low in money they're low in supplies you know so it's so it's it's uh i i i what i understand a lot of the, rep is the texas representatives mm -hmm. alongside the the southern part of texas now they're uprising mm -hmm. and they're not just conservatives exactly so i'm glad that they see this i'm glad that they see this because here we are trying to follow the mandates and, and you know, we can abide by the law. Do, the, do that. Mm -hmm. And then here comes, oh, okay, it's okay. We're going to open it to 100%, the centers. Well, you know what? Which is it? Are you for them and against us? Mm -hmm. you know, so it's it's really, uh, it's, it's really, it saddens me. You said it's something, saddens. you said something earlier when we, you were giving us a tour off camera. You said you felt like a prisoner in your own home. Yes. And that's why you call the wall the, your freedom wall. Yes. And that's, that's really what I, the, what I want to make sure that people get it is that this wall, which was okay with, with the left when it was 
when they were supporting it, and now all of a sudden it's become a racial issue and things like that. Um, that we understand that this is the face of those that pay our taxes. We are law-abiding citizens. What I know you're retired. What did you retire from? I'm a uh, teacher for 40 years at AO Elementary School. So those of you that don't know where that elementary school is, it's right next to, to the, the fence. <laughs> That's so you right. served your community yes. all around. I'm very aware of the community. It's a it's full of rich, uh, rich uh, heritage and and history and uh, and we need to enhance it. We need to not maintain it. We need to enhance that that culture. Exactly it's that culture to feel safe to feel proud of who we are, where we come from. Those who stay have remained in, in the barrio, the colorful barrio. And uh, I did leave, but I came back. I came back because I felt that I could give back to your community. To my, to my community. And I try, you know, I try to, to uh, be uh, uh, hands-on with it. But uh, we need to, again, it's, it's not you against me, I'm against you. No, I'm for the safety and security of everybody, mm -hmm. of everybody, because there is danger. There is danger. And, and there's danger because we don't know who they are. We don't know the backgrounds. I know there might be fine people. But that's why you have a front door. But that's why we have a front door. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're willing to bring in a perfect stranger into your backyard, no. I say, well, you know, uh, good go, for ahead. You. Yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. You know, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. But uh, I haven't uh, found a volunteer for it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Beto and Veronica? You know, they, they haven't no, volunteered? I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure they have a, a gated area and a doorbell. Well, and not you only know. that, we t we did a live from uh, close to Veronica's house, mm -hmm. the one that Facebook took down, and right smack there is a constable unit that shouldn't be there. But this is a quid pro quo kind of situation, and we're going to explore that a little more. When If you get broken into, who pays for the security system if you want to put in a security system? Well, you do. Well, not Veronica. Not Veronica. She paid for a security system through campaign funds. And then also, there is a constable unit there all the time. That means there is not a constable unit in District 1 because it's always in, by her house. That's not the job of the constables. No. And so I'm going to call out the corruption because there is a lot of corruption. And for those of you that call me names when, when we do these uh, live, live feeds, know one thing. I don't need um, people to come and pat me on the back because my mission is to bring the truth mm -hmm. because the media is doing a very poor job of not bringing the truth. Exactly. And they are endangering your life and the life of your children, well, including mine. Ratings. I mean, you know, they want the ratings. But uh, I have uh, shared a lot of my experiences through our travels. And uh, they wonder, you know, does it work? I said, well, do you have a doorbell? Do you have a wrought iron? Do you have an alarm system? Uh, yeah. I said, well, basically because of how my house is built. I can't have all that stuff. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I do have my road irons for protection because I didn't have this. What what year was your house built? 1912. 1912. My great grandmother, through their hard work and dedication and suffer. I mean, they suffered. Yes. They came to this country to really, they had land, you know, in, back in their hometowns. Uh, but they really came here to to really work. For the opportunities. For the opportunities. And, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm so grateful of their of their hard work because I'm able to show off their hard work. Yeah. And I'm very, very proud of, of my grandma's. My oh, grandma's you should house. be. You should be. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the American dream. Yes. And from day one, that is what we have been talking about. Protecting the American dream for the generations that come after us. Mm -hmm. Not for money and not for power. But let's make sure that we know our founding documents and understand them. We had a constitution yeah. class that we can, and we're going to yeah. keep doing them. Um, look, look for us. We're going to keep doing them. One of the major things that the left is able to use is the ignorance. 
but not anymore. And we're going to bring them to you both in English and in Spanish. Yeah. So if you live in El Paso, keep looking for that because we're going to keep scheduling them. So Dolores, thank you so much for sharing oh, your beautiful you. backyard You're with us. You're more than welcome. I'm more than welcome to have your gatherings here. Your, and uh, because we need to, we need to uh, express and give out the, the accurate information. The, the real message. The real message. And and uh, like I said, through our travels, I we have enlightened a lot of people, basically because they don't hear it through the media. No. They say, well, they don't show that in the news. I said, of course not, because they want the rabies. Right. You know, and it's, it's very all about unfortunate. Money. It's all about money. It's very unfortunate because it is for the safety and security, like I said, of everybody. I had a, we went to Georgia in December, uh, it was three women, two of them had their teenage daughters from El Paso. We went block walking for Kelly Loeffler and for Purdue. And one of the re Republican men, um, first of all, started yelling at me, how dare I support Trump, you know, <laughs> which was, that wasn't what I was there for. I was there to support Loeffler and Purdue. And, uh, and I told him, you know, the truth about the border. And he said, are you telling me? Well, he didn't say it. He screamed it at me. He said, are you telling me that the media is not telling me the truth about the border? And I said, that's right. Mm -hmm. Checkmate, jackpot. I'm telling you exactly mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And so I understand when you say you, when you go outside of El Paso, that you talk to people about the truth about the border. And that is key mm -hmm. because yes, our media, and you know, this is a call out to the media. When will you stand on the side of righteousness? When will you stand on the side of truth? We don't want you to go away, but we want you to report the truth. And the truth about the border is that the citizens in the border are in dire straits if you keep allowing lawlessness to prevail. And it comes from our own pockets. It comes from our hard work. You know, I want to make sure that if you're watching this, that you share it because you know that the media is not going to show this. And this is this is Border Talk 101. Border Talk 101. You can't get any closer to the border than this. And you can't get it from, I, I don't, no pun intended, from the horse's mouth and more than Dolores <laughs> because she has lived it. Yes. We have lived it I, we, here. I lived it before and after. Correct. And after. And like I said, we've had da property damage. Not just that, but we've had uh, scares. You know, mm -hmm. when you when you're facing a perfect strangers, they're men, mm. you know, you're kind of, you, you freeze and you go, okay. So, you know, it, it happened when I was with my daughter. My daughter was very young. The mother, the motherness, you know, the, oh, lioness, yes. the lioness kicked in and I confronted them. And I said, you know, I said, I said, you better leave. You know, uh, we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to live in fear in our country in our backyard, in our home. Uh, we shouldn't. No, we you shouldn't. Know, we shouldn't have that feel, That's not part PTSD, of the American, you know, American dream. Because uh, we shouldn't, you know. What's we right is live, right is what's wrong We should live wrong. free and uh, and I'm afraid. And and let me tell you, it, it was a big difference. It was, it was like, and Night and I'm day. sorry, to, I, I shouldn't apologize for my words that I'm going to say. It was my freedom. Mm. I was able to enjoy my backyard, my home. And the property damage, who paid for it? You did. Who do I call? Who, you I can mean, call Veronica Escobar if you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. You'll get a you'll get an email. Thank you for calling. You know, sending you us know an email. What? A lot of a lot of the a lot of, and I felt I, I found it very disheartening, because they say, "Well, move." Ooh. You know, and sadly to say, it was a family member. Well, move, and I said, "Why should I move?" Mm hmm. Would you move? Would you expect for for your country or your city to protect you? That's I their mean, job. That's, that's your home. That's, that's what the Constitution home. says for the tranquility of its citizens. Exactly. So you know, it is disheartening when you hear people say, "Well, why are you there? You know, why are you still living there? You know." And mm -hmm. I think it's very demeaning on their part. Well, it's your choice. You know, and um, and it's basically. Uh, you're, you're not better than I am, no. and I'm not better than you. No. You know, the thing is, it's, it's, it's kindness and tolerance and respect. You know, respect my freedom. I respect your freedom. Exactly. But nobody respecting you as respecting me. Well, and even now, 
now it's not respecting your safety yeah. by allowing people to come in illegally into our country. Yeah. Well, and not, yeah. and they come, you know, and, and I will, if, if it hurts you, I'm so sorry. But the, th the reality is, is they get tested and we are looking at diseases that we haven't seen be, uh, in a long time. And why dehumanizing our border patrol agents, those border patrol agents uh, that deal with them one on one and are now exposed to COVID, they are now exposed to even before COVID, the mumps, the measles. the measles, guess what they do? They go home and they take it to their families. Where's the outcry there? Where is the outcry there? So, you know, I wanted to you to make sure wanted to make sure that you heard it from somebody that is right next to the border wall, why it's important to have this fence and um, and that the continuation of the building of the wall, that we see it actually come to fruition because it respects and serves without a purpose. A, without a boundary, without a border, we don't have a country. We don't have sovereignty and we are a sovereign, a sovereign country. We need to be able to fix the problems that we have in our own country and allow people to if they want to donate to any charity to be able to do so, but for the, for the government to come and say, you must, is actually going against the foundation of our country. And we, we exercise that, that freedom very um, strongly. And we hope that everybody in the United States, if you're not in El Paso, that you actually get to hear this message because there is a, a victimization on this side of the border as well when you uh, allow lawlessness to prevail. You know, I'm Irene Armendariz Jackson. I was born in El Paso, Texas in 1970. I'm 50 years old. I have nothing to lose and nothing to gain by being outspo outspoken. Well, I have a lot to lose, uh, a lot of meanness actually, but, but we need to step up and we need to make sure that we do not allow the government to run over our rights. No more. Ya basta de la injusticia. Ya basta de la, los medios de comunicación ignorando a los ciudadanos de El Paso. We have rights as citizens of the United States, as taxpayers. Maybe we should pull all our taxes. You know, yeah, they would come after you then for <laughs> sure. For sure. So please follow me, Armendaris for El Paso. I'm on uh, Twitter. Armendaris DIS 16, Armendaris DIS 16. Let's make sure that we unite in the message. And especially if you're in El Paso, please message me. Again, if you are a Border Patrol spouse, if you are an ICE spouse, if you're an OFO spouse, I really want to hear from you. We want to make sure that our voice is heard and we do not lose sight of what is important. And that's pre preserving the freedoms that this country gives us through the American dream and those that are at the front lines, our border patrol, our ICE, our customs, that they, the world knows, the nation knows that you are doing a great job. And if you voted for Biden and you're part of these organizations, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem if you voted for Biden. You're part of the problem if you voted for Escobar. Any law enforcement should not be voting for these people because they come against mm -hmm. what we stand for. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the people that are with me are actually law enforcement spouses. Oh. And that's why they are so willing. Every time they walk out the door. They you, just, you don't know if they're yeah. going to make it back home. Mm -hmm. So El Paso, Texas, United States of America. This is Irene Armendariz Jackson coming to you from the Freedom Wall in Dolores Chacon's backyard from El Paso and for El Paso. God bless you, El Paso.